So finally, a church came out in opposition to the Texas law banning abortions after six weeks. If you haven't heard, the Satanic Temple came out opposing the Texas law that all the churches are supporting. So if you're not familiar with the Texas uh, law, the government there, the governor there just signed the bill saying once a heartbeat is detected approximately at six weeks, abortions will be banned. So the Satanic Temple is not to be confused with the Church of Satan, who also opposes any kind of restriction on abortion. Um, they actually don't get along. They're always, because uh, the Satanic Temple claims they're atheists, the Church of Satan saying they're true Satanists. Um, but if you're watching this and you oppose the Texas ban, stick with me because I'm only going to, I'm only going to touch on the spiritual aspect of this in the beginning. And then I'm going to give you arguments scientifically and philosophically why you should support this Texas ban. And even if I'm getting you angry right now, it's more reason to listen to me. St. Thomas Aquinas said, when you debate your opponent, don't attack their weakest argument, attack their strongest argument. Every argument that you pro-abortion supporters give me, I hear on the radio, I hear on TV, personally, they're, they're weak. I, I can't find a strong one to argue. They're all straw man arguments. By that I mean they're fake arguments. You set up a scary strong man that don't even exist and, and debate that like we're supporting that strong man. I'm going to give you real arguments that pro-lifers in this country believe. And I'm, and I'm going I'm to help you understand why you're losing. Yes, you're losing. Pro-lifers are winning in state after state. So even if you totally disagree with me, you need to stick with me and listen. This way, maybe you could have a more intelligent argument. Because frankly, your arguments are weak and they're all straw men. So first, on a spiritual level, uh, the Satanic Temple claim they're atheists. Like 300,000 members and they only started in 2012. I think that's bigger than the Church of Satan, which started by Anton LaVey in the 60s. But the Satanic Temple kind of, they kind of, you know, I don't know if they're telling the truth or lying because Satanists lie. <laughs> um, they do everything in opposition to what God commands. So their Ten Commandments are in opposition. They're exact opposite of God's Ten Commandments. So the atheists, we'll call them atheists for now, that are in the Satanic Temple will say, there's no such thing as God, there's no such thing as the devil. Well, first off, I've interviewed an exorcist priest who's done a lot of exorcism, and he testified that he was in contact with demons. He testified on my show that he's seen people levitate, that he heard people speak in languages they didn't know. And I actually have a video, and I'll see if I get it to pop up at the end of here, where I have on recording uh, the actual woman who the movie uh, The Exorcist of Emily Rose was based on. You can actually hear her speaking in like Latin, uh, Greek, Hebrew, like all these ancient languages that her mother said she clearly never knew. She was a teenager, she didn't know these languages. And all these languages, she was blaspheming God. So the devil does exist and demons do exist. And just like the satanic temple saying they're atheists, over the years he comes as maybe the Bible says sometimes the devil comes as an angel of light, or just sometimes you know it's evil, but it's you don't think it's the devil. Like for example, in the Old Testament, for thousands of years, this is historically documented, most people know this, before the time of Christ, the pagans would worship the false god of Baal, and the way they would worship him was sacrificing their firstborn child, throwing them into fires. Moloch was another god they worshiped children to. It was only the children that followed the god of Moses, God's children, that forbid child sacrifices. And then even in the New Testament, the Catholic Church has a, had wrote a document called the Didache, 50 AD, it's also called the Teachings of the Twelve Apostles. We don't think the Apostles 
actually wrote it themselves, but the church knew what they taught, so they call it the teachings of the Twelve Apostles. And in the Didache, 50 AD, the Catholic Church condemned abortion. So there was abortions going on even then. And also during that time, the first century, the pagans, when a baby was born, if it was weak or if it was a female, uh, for whatever reason, they would toss it into the woods just to let it starve to death or for, for the wolves to eat it. Well, the Christians were known for going and saving these children and raising them up and protecting them. Sometimes they found them and it was too late. But the church has always been pro-life. And the devil has always hated life. You see, because the devil hates God and God creates man in his own image, no matter how imperfect, whether that person is born with Down syndrome, whether that person is born blind, whatever disability that person has, he's still a child of God, born in the image and likeness of God himself. So God loves human beings. Satan hates human beings. And it's, it's kind of coincidental when the most pro-life president we ever had uh, came down an escalator in June of 2015 and declared his presidency. Two months later, in August, a 2,000 or 3,000 year old statue of Baal, where they used to sacrifice babies in Syria, was destroyed. The UN reported that they think ISIS destroyed it. And it's a little coincidental that when Judge Kavanaugh's hearings began, when he started talking, I think he testified and, and uh, the Democrats but brought that woman with the ridiculous, unbelievable stories. Uh, it, that was September 27. September 26, uh, the Smithsonian Museum had a uh, replica of a statue of Baal that I think it was made in London and it traveled around the world for the whole world to see. And they placed it in front of the Supreme Court as an exhibition, you know, exhibit of what was in the museum at that time. And it stayed there through the whole hearing of the Kavanaugh. Coincidence? I don't know. But there are spiritual, there are spiritual elements to this. Now, the atheist guys that are shaking their head and laughing at this, I'm going to give you the practical, the scientific, and the philosophical arguments. So the argument I always hear is, oh, you pro-lifers, you only care about the baby in the womb. Once it's out, you don't care. Well, like I said, the most pro-life group of people are the Catholic Church. From 50 AD, we have written documents that the Catholic Church has condemned abortion as a mortal sin. Pope Francis has recently said it's the most grievous of mortal sins. The Catholic Church does more for charity, spends more money on the poor than every other charity combined. We have hospitals. In fact, the Catholic Church invented the hospital system, and we own more hospitals than any other organization. And most of our hospitals are in poor countries where we help. We help poor women, poor children. We have so many programs for unwed mothers who, who can't, can't take care of a baby. We help them. If they want to adopt a baby, we have hundreds of adoption agencies that help them through the adoption process. So this is the biggest straw man, the biggest lie that pro-lifers don't care about life after the baby's born. Then the second argument I always hear, well, it's the woman's body, it's the woman's choice. This is the most anti-scientific argument I get from the most anti-scientific political party that ever existed. But I'm just going to give you some quotes from some scientists. And they were, uh, this was in 1981, there were these uh, group of scientists talking to the United States Senate Judiciary Committee on the question of when human life begins. Dr. Michelin Matthews Roth, a Harvard Medical School professor, uh, gave testimony from over 20 embryologists that human, okay, these are scientists that are experts on embryos. 20 embryologists, human life, uh, uh, testify that human life begins at conception. The father of modern genetics, Dr. Jerome LeJuan, 
told lawmakers to accept the fact that after fertilization has taken place, a, hum a new human has come into being. It is no longer a matter of taste or opinion. It is plain experimental evidence. His complete and fascinating testimony. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading too much. So, Dr. Jerome Lejuan, if you're not familiar with it, he was the scientist who discovered the extra gene, the extra chromosome he, that caused Down syndrome. In 1958, this scientist discovered what causes Down syndrome, considered one of the greatest scientists that ever lived. In fact, he was a shoe in he was a sure bet to win the Nobel Prize for science. But because of his study of human life, he knew scientifically life began at conception. So he testified before a group of scientists, hundreds of scientists, and he gave them the science. And he said the only reason people deny life begins at conception is for political and profit reasons. And he wrote his wife a letter that night saying, I just gave up my Nobel Prize. There's no way the scientific community is going to give me the Nobel Prize now. Because if you're not aware of this, the scientific community is all about profit and politics. Uh, science usually takes a backseat to politics and profit. In fact, uh, Bernard Nathanson, he was an abortion doctor, one of the first in America, did 70,000 abortions. And he said the way they got it legal, uh, the, their motivation was profit because he knew he'd be rich. And the politicians behind him uh, had him testify and he knowingly lied to Congress and said, oh, there's so many back alley abortions. And this is another argument, you know, it's going to become the hanger state. There's so many back alley abortions. When he knew, he said about 5,000 women died every year from back alley abortions. He knew that number was less than 100. And he knew that they weren't back alley abortions like they described. These were licensed doctors that people were going to pay and get an illegal abortion. And you say, why would a doctor do that? These doctors murder babies. You think they care about breaking a law and making cash money tax-free? They don't have to report it? So that's what was happening um, before the Supreme Court stopped states from limiting abortions. See, before Roe v. Wade, every state had their own abortion laws. And unlike another argument that men just want to control women's body, seven men decided in Roe v. Wade, seven older men decided that states don't have a right to protect the unborn child. And like I said, th these um, women are arguing it's their body. Science clearly shows it's a totally different human being. And Dr. Bernard Nathanson said when ultrasound was invented and he started watching his abortions on ultrasound, he was sick to his stomach, stopped doing abortion, and became the most pro-life uh, advocate that we had until he died. Dr. Bernard Nathanson looked this guy up. And recently, more recently, a director of Planned Parenthood, who was like Planned Parenthood's uh, employee of the year, Abby Johnson, she, you know, she was a director, strong pro-choice, pro-abortion woman, uh, but she actually wasn't a doctor, so she never did it. But one day a doctor asked her to assist in an abortion because the technician called in sick. So she had to watch the ultrasound while the doctor was ripping the baby apart. She got sick to her stomach. She said as the doctor was pulling the limbs off of the baby, she could see the baby's face in pain pulling away. And the doctor joking about it, like, oh, this one's tough trying to get away from me. Abby Johnson has become a strong pro-life advocate now. And you can learn about her in her movie, the movie they made about her called Unplanned, the true story of Planned Parenthood. And speaking of Planned Parenthood, you know, everybody wants to say, uh, you know, this is a civil rights issue. You know, it's the right of the woman. If she wants to uh, uh, abort a baby, no one has a say in it. It's just the woman. Men just want to control her body. Well, actually, she's controlling another human body. She's controlling another human body to the point of death. So anyone wants to control anybody, it's the woman who's having the abortion. Now... 
as far as civil rights, it's kind of funny. The party that uh, created the KKK, the party that put all the Jim Crow laws in this country into place, that same party who elected a Grand Kegel of the KKK as their majority leader of the Senate in the 90s, is the same party that supports abortion on demand. It's the same party that gets most of their money from Planned Parenthood. It's kind of funny that this party, who is the most racist party, now all of a sudden is a friend of black people, the Democrat Party, in case you haven't caught it yet. We're a friend of black people. We want to help black people. Yet, the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, actually gave speeches at KKK rallies where she said she wants to eliminate the Negro race. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to put clinics in all black neighborhoods. And today, 90% of the Planned Parenthood clinics are in black neighborhoods. And today in New York City, more black babies are aborted than born. Think about this. The Hispanic race from 2010 to 2020 in America grew from 16.2% to 18.4%. The black race declined from 12.4% to 12.2% in that same climb, in that same time period, a 10 year period. So it's these Democrats that are taking away the civil rights of the black unborn child. These are human rights. These people, these babies feel pain. I mean, if you've ever had an ultrasound, if you've ever seen an ultrasound, you see it's a living baby. In fact, Dr. Ben Carson, who did surgery on unborn children, said they do, there's uh, needle natal surgeons, surgeons that do surgery on babies still in the womb as young as 12 weeks old, but they have to give these babies anesthesia because they know they feel pain. Yet, we're doing abortions at 20, 22 weeks, ripping these babies apart with no anesthesia. This is barbaric. So this is why the pro-life movement is beating the pro-abortion movement in this country. Because we have truth, and we have science on our side. And let me see, I think I have one more argument of the other side. I don't want to forget. Um, I must have misplaced it. But if you have any arguments, please feel free to put them on the comment. And I'm sure my subscribers will have a, a good objection for you, or I'll put, a, I'll put a good objection. But now, it's time for you to choose. The, the battle lines have been drawn. Are you with the Satanic Temple and the Church of Satan? Or are you with the Holy Catholic Church that Jesus Christ established 2,000 years ago? or even with the, the many mainline Protestant denominations that support the ban on abortion that came from the true Holy Catholic Church. The battle lines are drawn, you know. Pope Francis said, getting an abortion is like hiring a hitman. This is the most grievous mortal sin that leads to hell. But there's forgiveness. If you're on the side of Satan, you can come to our side. All you got to do is go to Jesus Christ and be honest with him. Confess your sin and repent. Turn away from it. Come to our side. There's mercy. There's forgiveness. I'll be 56 next month, and I've been thinking about how fleeting life is. 56 years flew by. So if I take good care of my health, do everything perfect, like Jack LaLanne and Tom Brady, maybe I live another 30, 40 years, I will go like that. And then I will be held account. I will be held accountable for what I've done in this life. It goes by so quick. And tomorrow isn't promised. So make your decision today. Choose who you will serve today. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God bless. Stay Catholic. And do me one big favor. If you're buying or selling real estate, don't give your money to a company that's going to donate or support abortion causes. Go to realestateforlife.org. You're going to get a pro-life realtor with integrity and experience. And he's going to help support this ministry, this show, so I can keep preaching the truth. God bless.